Well, hello YouTube! In this tutorial we're gonna learn bubble sorting using while loops, two of them actually, but my honest advice is don't go through this tutorial if you don't know how to bubble sort using for loops, guys, okay? For loops are primary stuff to learn when we talk about bubble sorting. I'm gonna leave my tutorial linked to it down there in the description of this video and when you check that then we will talk about this. But if you know how to do this with for loops, then let's roll with the while loops. So this is our starting point, unsorted array of integers, of course, and this is hard-coded number of elements. You can grab this dynamically through calculation, but we'll not waste time on that because I already explained that. So let's proceed. Here's a couple of things we need to solve here. If you remember from for loop story, we need to have x and y, or a and b, for for loops, whatever you're gonna use. And starting point are always zero and then we need to iterate through pairs of these one by one, so we will not skip pairs of these. So basically we are incrementing plus one, plus one, plus one. And number of passes, number of combinations is always less for one than total number of elements. This is important thing when we are doing bubble sorting. So let's type that, what I'm saying here. Integer x, that, that will be for external while loop will be zero. So this is the starting point and when we are swapping we're gonna again use temporary variable and it, we will not initialize it at the moment. Okay, so just blank temporary variable. So let's roll with a while loop, while, so x, because this is external while loop, we're gonna have just as a for loops external and internal one. So x must be less than number of elements minus one. So this represents number of pairs. So if you have 10 elements, number of pairs is nine. So this is a first pass, let's say. After that, we're gonna establish y here, integer y that is zero. So this is for internal while loop and again first we must establish it and then we are going to use it inside a while loop. So this is almost, this is basically same situ situation as when you're working with for loops. External one and internal one. Okay, so here we need to check if that y is less than absolutely same stuff as here, but if you remember we also need to disregard that previous big pass. So we're gonna write that number minus one minus x here. So this is like a big pass and this is like secondary pass when you are disregarding that previous pass or rolling through this piece of combinations, piece of pairs. So when we do that, and this is just for passes, for pairs, we need to go to actually do swapping if we detect that, for example, left side is bigger than right side. So just as in the last tutorials, we're gonna compare four and three. Four is on the left side, that's important, and three is a less number on the right side. So here we are going to say, just a second, if something in array from left side, which is positionally set y here, okay, so this is just y when we talk about coordinates. Now, if that thing is bigger than this thing on the right, and positionally speaking, this is a y plus one, so array, y plus one, then we are totally free to do swapping. So first thing is we're gonna put this big number into temporary variable and that value is in array y, positionally speaking. So now this is just helper dude holding temporarily that four, which is bigger value than this stuff on the right side. Now we are going to push three to the left. How? Well, what is position here? Position is array y and it will get a value from the right side. And the right side is array on y plus one position, okay? So basically here we are done when we are speaking on the left side. So th this was like a left foot, left shift, because now three is passed to the four and still somewhere in air we do have temporary variable with a four as a value, somewhere let's say visually over here. So this dude is holding four for us right now, like a man in the middle, like dude who is helping. But right now with this line, three is pushed in place of four, in place of four. Okay, so what about how to pass this from temporary dude somewhere from over here visually, let's say into position of three. Well, array y plus one, when we talk about positions, now we will get value from that temporary dude. And this is basically right shift, okay? And both of these things are in Allah. So this was for switching three into four, and this was from temporary 
into 4. This is also final. But, you know, honestly, I must confess that I don't like while loops ex except when I'm grabbing end user input because you can e easily get into never ending loops. So, here is the thing if you run this, you're gonna land into problems because we don't have increments of epsilon and x. So, because this one is internal while loop, here we must jump to next epsilon. Well, how we are going to do that? If you remember the story from four loops, well, we'll just say epsilon plus plus here. Okay, but this one, I mean this one, it also must be incremented. So, how we're going to do that? Well, we'll just say x plus plus. If you don't do this, if you forget this, forget it, you will get yourself into never ending loop. Okay, that is very, very crucial. And now we are fixed when we talk about, um, we are done when we talk about algorithm. So let's just um, print those things like array when it's sorted. So printf sorted array, little bit of new line. This is to explain what is uh, happening and uh, integer x equals 0 and then upper level now will be when we talk about just printing stuff will be 10 which is in uh, into number variable and we are not skipping any sorted element so x plus plus and now we will just say printf that specific element which is presented with uh, represented with a uh, deep placeholder and concatenation positionally with that big array and x that represents any of these when they are sorted in a array. Hopefully I didn't mess something up. Let's run this piece of code and there you go. We have sorted array. So everything is fine, but I was talking that this kind of approach is a little bit ugly if you ask me. So what's gonna happen if you forget this piece of code? We're gonna find ourselves into some kind of problem, I think. In just a second. See? So something is happening. We're talking about never ending loop here because if you check your CPU right now, probably it is rolling at least 10% higher than when you are, when you don't have a while loop. And also guys, same stuff when you disregard this one, absolutely same stuff. Maybe there will be something on the screen, nothing, right. But we do have that problem. We do have that problem. Um, so yeah, this is very, very, very critical not to forget to increment X and Y. So guys, if you don't understand this, this tutorial in uh, pr principally speaking is not that different from when we are working with for loops in my previous tutorials, but for loops are way, way mentally easily if you ask me to grasp. So let's just repeat what we are doing here. We do need X because this is for external loop. We do need Y because we need to start from somewhere. Uh, this is the place where we, where we say that number of pairs is always less for one than total number of elements. And here we are repeating same stuff, but we are disregarding the previous passes. And if something on the left side is bigger than something on the right side and bubble sort is all about successful comparison of pairs, then we are doing that swapping thing. And swapping is, uh, if I may ask, very good explained in our previous bubble sort tutorials when we were talking about for loops, so I will not go there. But yeah, yeah, I don't like while loops, they are just, um, I don't know. They're just weird. I mean, when you're grabbing, when you're reading file, like textual file, when you're doing some kind of processing, uh, like um, tinkering about some, some non-stop inputs, that's okay. But when you're uh, combining algorithms and while loops, and if you forget something, weird stuff will happen. Okay, so let me check that one more time. And there you go, that thing is sorted. And yeah, I can also copy paste, for example, that thing right here and to print uno sorted array. Um, I think I'm gonna have everything fixed. Okay, so this is unsorted and this is sorted. So I can put, for example, I don't know, here I can put n next line and then you will have both variants. So unsorted and sorted. And guys, this will also work if you have duplicates. So for example, here, if I say like a 10 again and one again and three again, uh, that will not change anything. Uh, we're gonna see all these results 
but now I need to boost this to how much? 13? 13 elements, I think. Uh, like, yeah, 10, 11, blah, 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 13, plus 3. And also they will be sorted, but in a this way. So uh, sorting will not disregard duplicates. You will see them on a the screen. See here and here and also at the end. But, you know, let's just revert to simpler, simpler stuff. Because at the end of the day, array is array, array is dirty, and mathematically spe speaking, sets are not dirty. Uh, if I remember correctly, mathematically, sets doesn't have duplicates. Correct me on that one. Um, unfortunately, I'm not mathematician. Well, I don't know, maybe one day I will have enough money to dedicate myself to mathematical stuff, but at the moment I'm into programming, which is... a uh, I don't know, maybe sad story because I always liked the mathematics but I didn't have enough time to invest in, in it, into it a dedicated amount of time, which is extreme amount of time that you need to dedicate for be any any good in math. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, share this channel with other people, subscribe to this channel if you didn't, so you're gonna help them, you're gonna help me to boost this channel, boost views a little bit, and uh, yeah, generally speaking, thank you, and uh, see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.